guys and welcome to the fish room I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip now today I thought we would revisit something that's extremely important to me and something that I discuss a lot in all of my videos and that is quarantine now a lot of people think that quarantine or maintaining that standard of care for our fish is something that we only do for a short amount of time, i.e. when we set up a quarantine tank and observe our fish before adding them to our display. But I think it's especially important when maintaining many tanks or even just several tanks that we stay ever diligent in order to protect our fish, our investment, and our hobby. And by that I mean it's really a very smart idea to have separate equipment for each aquarium. I know this sounds excessive, but if you even look at what I've been dealing with recently with Captain Cranky Pants, my wild Oscar, you'll see that illness, disease, or things like that can rear their ugly head even years after we've introduced fish. And for that reason, I really recommend that each aquarium has its own set of equipment. Now, luckily for me, I've always done this, and Captain has his own siphon tube, his own bucket, and his own net, even though I rarely to never net that fish. Um, and I think it's because of this that whatever is affecting that fish has not impacted any other aquarium in the fish room. Now, this, does, you, this doesn't mean that, like, if you're using a python system, you have to have completely different pythons for each aquarium. But what it does mean is whatever enters the water should be unique to that aquarium, at least in my opinion. Or that you have a really great protocol for sterilizing equipment in between uses of aquariums. Now, I've shown you in the past how I sterilize things, and I'll put a card link to that video here. Um... And that is something that I do as well. Generally, after I've had fish for a year or so, then I'll use common equipment. But still, even in between doing so, I will dip that equipment just to be on the safe side. Um, also today, I just wanted to give you an update on my 75-gallon nano tank. Um, I've actually broken some of my own rules and added some fish that I think you might find surprising in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that and talk a little bit more about that. And I hope that you guys really take to heart how important it is to maintain a level of caution when operating several aquariums. There's nothing more devastating than when, when a fish falls ill and then it spreads. It gets expensive, it can be deadly, and it's just heartbreaking. And the easiest way to prevent these issues is... <laughs> prevention you know try not to cross contaminate um, one other thing that I do that I'd like to mention is I keep a spray bottle of peroxide in my fish room it's super inexpensive and if I have my hands in an aquarium I'll spray down my arms with peroxide and then wipe them off with a dry rag and this helps me as well as my uh, refill tube and this just helps give me a little bit of peace of mind about uh, cross-contamination in that way. But anyway, let's look at some fish and talk about the changes in my 75-gallon South American nano community. If you're new here, this is my 75-gallon aquarium that is based around a South American community. It houses barred pencil fish, green neon, some epistogrammas, a ton of otocinclus and a single hypoptoma gulaire or giant otocinclus. It's pretty heavily planted with a range of relatively low light plants from Anubius to Bulbitis to thickets of crypts of a medium size down to a smaller parva size. It also has some hydrocotely or pennywort and apparently there's moss growing up the back wall, though I did not place it there. Um, I also utilize a lot of manzanita driftwood, as you can see, as well as some almond leaves. And the almond leaves have been really, really integral in the otocinclus being able to thrive in this aquarium. Now this is how it looks 90% of the time, with all the fish being out and about in groupings, the green neons hanging out in the middle of the aquarium, interacting with those plants, and the pencils being more in the top half. And then of course the otocinclus being everywhere. Well, I've always said that I don't like to mix epistogrammas and Coriodorus, but in the process of restructuring my fish room, I had this group of orange laser quarries 
and I just decided to try them in here to see how they'll do and you can see they are very very happy now it's important with this type of corridor is to make sure that you have them on a the, uh, substrate that's appropriate for their barbells in this aquarium I'm utilizing a Tropica soil which is very smooth and gentle on their barbels so it poses no risk to their health um, I think we'll go ahead and feed this aquarium and take a closer look now maintenance on this aquarium is really simple about once a month I have to get in here and hack back some dead leaves uh, it does have a small amount of string algae in here which doesn't really trouble me I just manually manually remove it um, and I do water changes each week of about 30% on this aquarium. It does not get any fertilization or supplementation to the plants beyond the LED shop lights that I'm using and the enriched soil. Now while this aquarium is not the flashiest in my fish room, it is one that I particularly enjoy watching and that's because the suitability of the fish all going together and being kept in such large groups is just extremely rewarding. And you can see right away how healthy and outgoing everyone is. Again, those fish with the vertical, vertical striping are called Nanostomus espy or barred pencil fish. They're my absolute personal favorite pencil fish, despite not being the most flashy, in that they're really unique and they're the only pencil that doesn't have a diurnal rhythm, meaning their color is the same in the dark as it is in the day. Uh, a lot of pencil fish will have vertical barring or horizontal barring rather during the day and at night when they get into their nighttime colors, they get these vertical bars. I just think these guys are super unique. And you guys, if you've been around for a while, know how much I just love green neons. Now green neons can be a bit timid when kept in small numbers, but when kept in large groups like in this aquarium, they are absolutely outgoing and visible. Now I'm really hoping that my experiment with the Coriodorus works well because they're absolutely gorgeous. In here as well, you can see some triple red cockatoides, uh, epistogrammas which are ones that were in the same tank as uh, my black neons and I just thought, decided to move them into this aquarium to see how things went. You can see there's a bunch of females that are fired up as well. Because this is a 75 gallon aquarium, I shouldn't have any issue housing a harem of these dwarf cichlids. Look at these fish, aren't they gorgeous? So this is an aquarium that's situated very, very close to my armchair in my fish room and it's one that I particularly enjoy spying on. Uh, the health and color of the fish and the contrast between the plants I just think is really, really successful. It's a very easy tank to maintain requiring uh, very little effort really and I'm excited to see if these Coriodorus start breeding in here. Regardless though, I think they offer a nice little pop of color and level of activity that wasn't in the aquarium before. And they're just truly, truly beautiful in their own right. So I'm in the process of building a few more model communities for you guys, but I'd love to hear in the comments section down below what sort of theme you'd like to see. I tend to prefer to stock fish based on loose geographic region. Not really a uh, set biotope, but definitely find that fish behave much more naturally when we group them at least by loose geographic region, as I've done here with this South American aquarium. So if you have any suggestions of different regions you'd like me to focus on, let me know below. Look at that little bait ball of adorable fish. Now it's important to mention that all of the schoolers in this aquarium stay well under two inches. So even though historically they're kept in small aquariums, you can see how absolutely suitable they are to this larger aquarium, which allows me to keep each individual school in a much larger number. I think you have to agree with me when you see that these guys are absolutely outgoing and beautiful. As always, I want to know your guys' thoughts. What is your opinion of this aquarium, the fish inside it, and what would you like to see me do in the future? 
Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I have a lot of exciting things planned for you guys, and I wouldn't want you to miss any of it.